All right, guys, welcome back to the Hearts Football Manager 2022 career mode. This is episode six, and arguably the biggest and most important episode so far because we've played two Premier League games and we've lost them both by one goal to nil with no points, with no goals, and we even played Rangers in the Betfred Cup last 16, and we got beat 1-0 in that as well. So three competitive games since our opening match against Celtic, and it's been three 1-0 defeats. I guess the pros are defensively, we've been not bad, you know. We played the old firm, and both of them could only score one goal against us. But the bad news is, guys, we can barely create any chances. We haven't scored any goals. Uh, the game against Rangers, we didn't even have a single shot. That was embarrassing. We're looking to bounce back against them now. Uh, we're taking on Aberdeen, who are actually having a good start to the campaign. They've got two wins for two. So they're flying high. Things are great for them. Things aren't so great for us. So we need, this is a massive game. We need this. They'll go into this match with a shitload of confidence. We'll go into this match with practically no confidence. But a win here, I'm sure, can kickstart the season. And uh, then we'll take things for there. I mean, it's absolutely crucial that we get a result here. Preferably a win. But I can't even imagine what a draw will look like here. So let's make sure that does not happen. Nanjali had got picked up a slight injury in training, but I'm thinking about going with Boyce. I mean, Nanjali's got two goals to Boyce's one, but I don't know. I think we're going to go with Boyce here. Cammy Devlin isn't performing the way I want him to. I think we're going to, believe it or not, guys, yeah, we're actually going to go with a more attacking, uh, we're going to go a more attack-minded here, we're actually going to push Cammy Devlin, not forward, but we're going to put him on attack, I will change him to attack, we want him to be, not a fan's playmaker, I want him to be, I don't even know if he's going to play, I, that's the problem, I don't even know if he's going to play send a fan's playmaker, I think I'll play him as a fan's playmaker, but I don't think Cammy Devlin's going to be the man that starts in this game, I think the man that starts is going to be, Josh Ginelli, his form looks no bad. Can he play there? No, he can't. Right, so that's not good. Can Woodburn play there? Woodburn can play there as an advanced playmaker. What else can Woodburn play as? Pretty much advanced playmaker looks to be his best. So, yeah, we're going to play Woodburn there. Uh, Ginelli on the left. Mackay on the right. And uh, the wing-backs, we need to get them on support. Don't want to be too negative. I remember that was the Rangers game. It didn't go to plan. Cochrane will start over Kingsley, I think. And obviously, Nanjali no playing. Halliday is not going to be there. Haring, maybe we can get Haring onto the bench somehow. Andy Walk, Jimmy Walker's not doing that great. Haring can go on the bench. And uh, that's going to do us then, guys. That is going to be the team. I'm looking at the fitness. Everyone looks all right. So uh, let's go. Massive game here, guys. We're going to, we're going to go positive from the get go. Uh, I am going to work with a uh, higher tempo, but we're going to go uh, slightly. Shorter with the pass direct. We're just going to try and be more direct in this game, guys. And uh, the width, we will... I'm happy with playing down the middle. And uh, I want to see us be a bit more expressive. Create, show some more creative freedom. And, uh, hi guys, let's just go and win this match because it's not been a good start to the season. It really hasn't been. Uh, a bunch of players don't seem happy with it. Ten players have got mixed feelings. Uh, that's not good. I didn't even think about it that much. I just... Changed a couple of the players' mentality. Anyway, they can see us. Our lineup. We've went through it. Gordon Sutter, Moore, Halkett, Smith, Cochrane, Benny, Woodburn, Mackay, Janelli, Boyce. Going more attacking than we have in previous games. Aberdeen lineup up with Lewis, McCrory, Gallagher, Bates, Considine, Matty Longstaff, former Celtic legend Scott Brown. He is now their captain. Lewis Ferguson, Marley Watkins, Ryan Hedges, and new signing Christian Ramirez. It is a pretty strong Aberdeen side. Not going to lie, on paper, that Aberdeen team. Looks really good there, but we're gonna we're gonna have our hands in our pockets and go. I expect I win the day, guys. Maybe that's a bit too casual, but at the same time, I don't know. I don't want to go pointing the finger. I don't want players accusing me of you know bullying them or harassing them or some shit like that. So yeah, here we go then. Hearts getting his underway in this crucial match. Extend it. We're just gonna go to key highlights in this one. Because we are going to do two games. We're going to play, obviously, against Aberdeen. And then I believe we're taking on Dundee United at Tannadice next time out. So, yeah, it's going to be two games in. And uh, we'll, I think we'll just play them both on key highlights. Obviously, up next, Edinburgh Derby. That'll be a feature episode. That will be the extended highlights for sure. I mean, who knows? I could maybe play a match in full if somebody wants to see that one time. Uh, it would be interesting. But I don't... Oh! Back post. It was Lewis there. Clearing it. But I thought we were in with the first chance. Benny to Michael Smith. Smith to... I don't know who that was, but here, I think it was Benny. 
Pal Kitten, but we've started as well here. Six minutes in, we are the team that's coming forward. It's through to Barry Mackay, and it's a great challenge by the gone Ginelli. His shot looks like it was forced over, but apparently not. The referees gave a goal kick when I could have swore the goalkeeper there hit it out for a corner. Was it were perhaps offside? I don't know why he's gave. A, I don't know what he's gave, but I don't know. It should have been a freak. It looked like it should have been a corner to us, but wasn't he given? But he had a positive start now. His boys, oh, great play here through to Josh Ginelli, and he's been brought down. Penalty, yes. We've been given a penalty. Ginelli goes down in the box, and I mean, tell you what, being a bit more attacking here, it looks like it's working. Maybe Woodburn in that um, that attacking playmaker role. Oh, no, Mackay, and he just stones it like a donut. He hits the post and doesn't fucking move, man. Barry Mackay. I mean, it's a great start, but we've missed a penalty. And Kyogo Furuhashi has made it two for Celtic, but I mean, honestly, the way our luck is, you wouldn't be surprised if Aberdeen go up here and score with their first chance. We've had four shots, five shots now make that. Aberdeen have had any. Uh, they've added one there. They've had five corners, though, which is quite a lot in the first half. Halkett, can we launch one more attack before the uh, the halftime whistle? It's Cochrane doing this left hand side. Co Cochrane, back post. Not good enough. Straight into the hands of Joe Lewis. And that should probably uh, do it then for this first half. A action. Aberdeen playing it for the back, though. That's tricky. Oh, boys was almost in there. Uh, Suter heads it down to Benny. Benny back to John Suter. Suter could, he's going to launch a ball forward. I had a feeling he was looking for a long pass, but he decided against it. Ben Woodburn to Ginelli. Ginelli to Boyce. It's good play here. Boyce it to Cochrane. It's lovely play. We're on the attack and it's Cochrane coming in towards the box. He's He's still, what's he done there? He finds Ginelli, Ginelli. Mackay, go! Barry Mackay makes up for the penalty miss. He might not have scored for the spot, but he scored a header there for about the same distance out. And Barry Mackay, lovely header goal there. Puts us 1 0 up just before half time. He makes up for his penalty miss. And now we go in to the half time whistle here. And it's it's been absolutely great. So uh, let's pump the fists. No, no, we don't want to do that. Hands on hips. I'm pleased with credit loads. Uh, I think our passing has been good so far. Keep it up. Our passing has been good. Our passing has been great. So we're going to keep that up. Looks like Cameron Devlin. Uh, Devlin is reacting aggressive. I don't think he's happy the fact that we dropped him for this game. But so far, so good. You can't really say that dropping him has been a mistake. Because we're not just winning. We are pretty much dominating our building here. In terms of chances created and possession. So I uh, have been a much better team. Now it's Josh Ginelli. Can we try and make it two? Could it have been a penalty? Oh, I think it might be. I thought he won the ball. It looked like Marley Watkins won the ball, but the referees gave a penalty. And Barry Mackay, who's already missed one, is going to have a chance here to score a, a penalty for the second time. And this time he doesn't miss it. He blasts it and Joe Lewis guesses the right way, but he doesn't make the save. That's Barry Mackay's second goal for today. We've got a 2-0 lead and things are looking pretty tasty. Barry Mackay looking for the hat trick and he hits the top of the net in there. So uh, yeah, 53 minutes in, Aberdeen all over the place, getting absolutely dominated here. And uh, I, I believe we're going to go ahead and make some substitutions here. Mentality. I think we'll go balance. Let's change some instructions up here. We'll slow the tempo down, slow the passing down. We're going to be more disciplined. Uh, what are we going to do? And we're going to drop back a bit. <laughs> because why not? Still a wee bit uh, sick, guys. So if you're wondering why I'm making random coughs, and that is the reason for it. And with 20 minutes to go, let's go ahead and make some substitutions here. Sharpness. Who needs, who needs games? Peter Haring, I think, can come on. I think we're going to bring on Peter Haring, and he can play in there. Um, Gary Mackay, Stevens lacking a bit of sharpness. He's lacking something, that's for sure. Uh, Jamie Walker. I think we'll bring on Jamie Walker for Ginelli. I've actually, oh shit, I'm putting Jamie, I've just put Jamie Walker up front. I uh, didn't mean that. Uh, I guess we will, well, we switch him about. Where, what can we just put Ben Woodburn up front? We can. What can Woodburn play as though? He can play as a. I don't know what he can play as. Well, <sighs> do we really want Jimmy Walker in midfield though? Probably not, if I'm being honest. But I think that's. I don't know what we're doing here. What the fuck are we doing? Um, you know what? Barry Mackay I think can come off and we'll bring on Mackay Stephen. Barry Mackay's done his job. And we, yeah, we'll leave Jimmy Walker in the middle of the park. I don't think it's going to make much of a difference, if I'm being honest. Um. You know what, mentality will probably just move to cautious because this game's pretty much done. There's Craig Halkett standing over the free kick. Oh, and he drives it right at the goalkeeper. Well, not right at the goalkeeper. The goalkeeper had to come and get it. It's Michael Smith back to Halkett. Halkett, we know we can hit them. He's refusing to hit it, though. 
Hulk it to Michael Smith. The Rolls Royce trying to find a cross. He finds Haring. Oh, we're passing it a bit well here, but oh, what do we fuck that was? I mean, all these look at the defenders, man. They're all passing it among them. We're going back the way though. This isn't good. Jesus, can somebody get the ball forward? Finally, a forward pass is Woodburn to Mackay Steve. Mackay Steve out to Smith. Smith through to Woodburn. That is phenomenal stuff, and it starts wide. It's a wasted chance there by Ben Woodburn. Should have been a goal. Puts it past the post. But we're not too worried, guys. We're still 2 0 up. Aberdeen have picked up three yellow cards today. I definitely don't think they'll be picking up three points or have a spoken too soon. It's a corner. Oh, Craig Gordon saves onto the bar. Michael Smith clears it away. Woodburn will chase it. Constantine wins the header. That attack is gone. St. Mirren have pulled one back against Celtic. Uh, St. Johnson level against Dundee United. Uh, uh, scores are coming in. Longstaff blasts that one over. And I think that was Aberdeen's last chance of probably getting into this game gone. I would expect us to see this out now, and we have, and we will, it's Hearts 2, Aberdeen nil. In the end, Aberdeen did make a bit of a fight back of it after we got the second goal, but there was only one team that deserved to win that, and we pretty much blew them away. So, uh, yeah, I mean, Aberdeen may have began to create a couple of chances towards the end, but we took a foot off the gas, and that's pretty much how that happened. Well done, lads. Good win for us. Exactly what we need. I wasn't going to get, you know, carried away, but, yeah, we lost our opening two games. Uh, you can get the patterns of the play. Football is really simple. If the players are happy, the results come much easier. Yep, the players are happy. Our general play was very pleasing, and I'm happy to secure the win. Yes, of course we are. Uh, all the fans seem happy, so that's all good. And that win then moves us up into seventh place. Uh, we go a point, ab not a point above Hibs, but we're above Hibs, and we're pretty much level with Hibs. Goal difference is the same, so yeah. Uh, we take on Dundee United next, who I believe have dropped into the relegation playoff position. So that'll be interesting. Mackay, we're going to praise Mackay actually, because his form's been good lately. Uh, you were superb last time out. You'll keep that in mind, and that's what I want to see. We don't want to go to the post-match press conference. I thought we just did a post-match press conference. It's almost like they give you two in this year's game. Uh, some other results. Uh, so yeah, Celtic Rangers then got 100% winning records. Looks like those two are going to be flying away with the title at the top of the table and uh, we'll just be waiting I guess behind we'll try <laughs> to be there or thereabouts and Aberdeen like we said they've just dropped points so yeah everyone is lost now in the league I believe apart from the two old firm clubs so yeah it is, it is what it is it is what it is uh, let's check the inbox what we got here some more analyst data hub I don't know what this is uh, I guess we'll take this let's have a quick look Okay, general performance. Is this for the team or the players? Okay, shows you amount of goals. I guess I've just added this in. I don't remember this being in last year's FM. I will look at this offline, or not offline, but, you know, off recording or whatever at a later date. I'm just not too bored about it right now, so I'll just go ahead and skip it. But it's nice to see that you have all this, you know, information available to you. It's showing you your next uh, opponents, Dundee United. So, uh, yeah, Fortnite staff meeting. Uh, I think we'll just request somebody to inbox. Don't really want to attend that. And uh, yeah, that'll do us for now. Alright, here we go. Dundee Rider up next. They're sitting in 11th place in the table. I think they'll finish a lot higher than that. So it's early days, but they're, they're definitely they're definitely too good to be in the 11th. And I was actually looking at their squad, and there's a few players that I, I wouldn't mind adding to their team. So hopefully in January. If we could uh, find some money, maybe find a few pennies if you're doing the back of the sofa. There, there could be a few players in this Arabs team that I uh, that I want to add to my own. And most notably, probably, I'm a big fan of Fuchs, but in terms of players with potential, I think Dylan Levitt and Chris Mockery uh, are definitely going to be ones for the future. But obviously, jo Jordan Fuchs is a phenomenal player, probably their best player at the club. And also, Benjai Segrist could perhaps be a replacement for Craig Gordon down the line, but uh, we're not going to worry about potential Dundee United players, we're just going to worry about the potential absolute arse beating that we can deliver to them over the next 90 minutes, so let's go and deal with that, let's point the finger and we're going to tell them pick off, pick up for where you last left off because it was a good win against Double Dean and we want more of the same, so uh, let's go and do it, take one game at a time, uh, we struggled under the fixture list at the beginning, but we ain't going to struggle anymore. And uh, you can see their team then. Segrist, McCann, Mulgrew, Edwards, Freeman, Fuchs, Harks. Can he see the rest of it, but it doesn't matter. As for us, playing Ben Woodburn again in that advanced playmaking role, because 
he did well against Aberdeen, so it'd be stupid for me to change it. No place for Cammy Devlin. But uh, who knows? Maybe he'll earn his way back into the starting eleven soon. But I just I don't know. I feel, I feel like I can't really change it after that win against Aberdeen. I feel it'd be harsh to take anybody out. So that's why we're sticking with things as they are. Uh, Mackay seems to be the form man at the moment. So hopefully we can have another good performance from him today, and uh, that should get us on our way. I think to uh, a successful result. Woodburn at the moment the only player in the, the 7 ratings and as soon as I say that he drops down to a 6.9 so I've scud him but so far so good 24 minutes in no real highlights to show us but we're, we've created more chances than Dundee United we've edged in the possession as well so it's, it's been a decent start if not spectacular uh, Cochrane's playing a 7.0 Mackay with a 7.2 so Barry Mackay has been the key man as of late and it's proven that again here today. Now, we're in at half time. It looks like Boyce is taking a knock. And I may actually have to take Boyce off. Well, it's not ideal. He wants to stay on, but injury is affecting him. And this is not an ideal situation because... Uh, Nangelay is not fully fit either. So we could play Ben Woodburn up front. And we may actually look to do that. I'm going to play Ben Woodburn as an advance forward. On attack, and we will we will then bring on Cam Cameron Devlin, who we will play as box to box on support. So yeah, we'll not we'll take away the fans playmaker role just because it doesn't really suit Devlin. His body language is aggressive. So hopefully that's good for the game. Hopefully he'll go on and he'll start firing some aggressive passes a bit. Maybe get into some aggressive tackles. Hopefully he doesn't pick up any aggressive uh, cards. So that wouldn't be too good. I think we'll stick with that. Let's go attacking, even though we're, we're playing well, but let's just up the ante a wee bit here. And we'll also get Barry Mackay to go into a more attacking role as the inside forward. And he's having a good game, but hopefully we get him to go a bit more attacking. He can try and find us a winner. I'm happy with the performance. Keep it up, guys. Everyone seems motivated and inspired. That's what you want to see. It's a team full of winners, but we're not winning. That's the problem, right? Halkett at the back plays it as sort of sort of. Maybe we can actually see some highlights this time in the second half. First half. It was like a goal draw. Oh, what a ball through the Devlin. We've just brought him on. He should score that. Absolutely has to score that ball. Hit right at the goalkeeper. Ah, uh, it would have been a goal within like two minutes of coming on. It would have been a perfect start. But he couldn't find a way past uh, Segrist. I was talking about how good Segrist was at the start of the game. And he just proved it there. For forced into a good save. 9-9 now in shots. Dundee ready to take the lead in terms of shots. 10-9. It uh, looks like we may have to bring on... Uh, Cammy Logan, I think, for Smith. It's been recommended. Yeah, I think we'll all make to, look to make a substitution here. Ten minutes to go, man. That's mad, right? This game's just flowing. Uh, Michael Smith, he's tired. Everyone's tired, though. Who can we bring on? Who can't we we'll bring on? Nanjali, I think, for... Yeah, Ben Woodburn's not having a great game, is he? Yeah, we're going to bring Nanjali on. And we'll also bring on... Who else can we bring on? You know, we'll take off Michael Smith. He is it looking a bit nervous. I don't know why he's nervous. What the fuck's he got to be nervous about? Hey, right, we're taking him off. Eight minutes to go. Will there be another chance? Uh, there is a chance, but it's not for us. Levitt whips it in. Corner. Headed away. Harks will chase it. It's been intercepted by Mackay. That's a terrible looking pass there. Mackay's got Nanjali up front. He plays it to Logan. It's Mackay. Come on, find Nanjali. Goal, surely. Oh no, headed away. Right, Janelli, who's done absolutely nothing. Can he make up for his lack? Oh my, oh my god, what a goal for Alex Cochrane, holy shit. That's a screamer, top ends. That reminded me of the Aaron Hickey goal against Hibs a few years ago, only that one was better and didn't he take a deflection. The only thing that deflected off was the post on the way in. What a phenomenal goal that is. Jesus Christ, Alex Cochrane, give that guy a medal. I'm going to buy him a can of Red Bull after this game because that ball had fucking wings. That ball flew into the back of the net, man. Oh yes, what a, what a, what a result. Another clean sheet. Another win, another three points. Look at all the green here, man. Look at it. It's like a Celtic Hibs takeover. There's so much green on my screen, but uh, we'll set off for that because high ratings is a good thing in life, especially in football manager. So it's so another win. Takes us up the table. Well done, lads. That was good for us. That's what we want to see. We want to see more of it all the time. Uh, why are your players struggling in front? Why are we struggling in front of goal? We just won the game. Disagree. Aaron Kennedy, what a, what a prick he is. That's the last time he comes into our uh, press conference here. Get him banned. See his pass. Take it away. Uh, I moves up to fourth place now. 
So after a slow start, two defeats in a row in the league, we've now won two in a row. And uh, yeah, things can just change around in a short space of time. Liam Boyce is injured, expected to be to one to three days. That's not too bad. Cochrane shines. I mean, it was a, I need to give him credit. The goal was fucking phenomenal. Uh, you're superb in front of goal. I'll keep doing what I'm doing. Yes, mate, please keep doing what you're doing. Uh, I think we need, maybe need to sign him on a permanent contract. That goal was a screamer. Celtic boss Ange Postanoglu. Was it Danny Dice? He's keeping an eye on John Suter. Well, you're not getting him, so don't bother coming to watch our match. You stop creeping on his mate. You, you, ain't getting, you ain't getting Big John. Big John's staying here. Especially with that 7.5 million release clause that we've got on the guy. So yeah, I don't think Celtic are willing to pay that much. So uh, yeah, they ain't getting him. We'll send the assistant here to the press conference and he can talk about how well that match at Tannadice went. The transfer window ends in three days, but no one's allowed to sign clubs, uh, sign players anyway. So it's all irrelevant. All eyes will come down to January when the, the real transfer window opens for us. That's when we can make a move in terms of signing players or letting go of players. Uh, I think he's struggling being it. Uh, so Craig Gordon has given us a wee. We'll discuss it with McNeff. Let's see here. Is there anything on your mind? Look, like I've not been getting. Right, he's not getting playing as much. Uh, we'll, we'll try and play him more. All right. Okay. So we've basically just said to Aaron that we're going to give him more game time, even though I don't want to. I don't want to give him game time. The guy's not very good, but we've just made a promise anyway. So we'll need to try and we'll need to try and uh, live up to that promise. Can't be. Can't be dishing out fake promises here to the uh, the Hearts lads. So, right, now we need to play Aaron McInef. I don't think... He, we definitely won't be starting the guy, but who knows, maybe if he gets onto the bench in the Mahibs match, maybe we'll uh, we'll find a space for him in the team with about 10, 15, 20 minutes to go. Hibs, where are they? They've, they've only played three games. We'll advance a few days, and we'll see what the league table's looking like after that. But I think we've got a 14... Is it a 14 day? No, it's 15 days off before we take on Hibs in the Edinburgh Derby. We've got Mullerwell taking on Dundee. Scottish Cup begins today as well, the first round. We don't enter until the fourth. So uh, a lot of these teams we don't need to worry about. A lot of these teams will be well gone and eliminated by the time it comes around. Uh, basically, all the wee mad teams that no one's heard of. So there you go. Uh, let's see, scouting update, no scouts recommendations. So no one's been recommended. Don't know why. Uh, Premier Division. Hover gets one over on Liverpool. Looks like Liverpool have lost, but we're more interested in Scottish Premiership here. Let's see how the other teams go on. Will we stay fourth? I, I doubt it. I doubt it. Here's the other. So Rangers are taking on Celtic. Old firm game right there. That's going to be massive. You can see Mullerwell's win is taking him up to third. We'll drop down to fifth. Aberdeen are taking on County. St Mirren are taking on St Johnston. So, uh, interesting to see what the results are going to be here. It's a war. Celtic have went to Rangers. Uh, Ibrox in the beaten Rangers. Mad result. Watkins has beaten the score for Aberdeen. They beat Ross County. St Mirren, we're 2 1 win. In Paisley, they beat St Johnston. And we st we're still fifth, so we haven't dropped in the league table yet. And the only other game to be played is Hibs against Livingston. So some bad news, we've picked up injuries to three players and they're pretty key players, Cameron Devlin, Jamie Walker and Craig Halkett, that's the bad news. Good news is they actually aren't long injuries and they should all be back for the next game against Hibs due to the international uh, the international games. We've got some time off, international football's here, so we've like another two weeks off before we play Hibs and hopefully all these guys are back. Devlin's going to be for one to three days, same for Jamie Walker. Craig Halkett injury looks to be slightly longer, but he should still be available for this game. He was injured lifting weights. What the fuck? The guy got injured in the gym. That's mad. Supposed to he go to the gym to stay fit and keep healthy, and this guy goes to the gym and gets injured. Uh, madness, absolutely madness. No luck in the world. But here we go. Craig Halkett's out for eight to eleven days. So I know he's probably going to sit at home now playing the PlayStation. But fuck it. As long as you as long as you're back, mate. For what days that we play take on Hibs? Twelve days. I think we take them on in the. 12th of September. Wait, I think it's the 11th of September, 9-11. You better not get injured on 9-11. It's a memorial day. We, we need you fully fit and ready for that uh, that big day. But anyway, guys, that's going to do it. Like I said, next time out, we're taking on Hibs. 
going out up to fifth place. Everybody want me. Everybody hitting the panic button, going, "Oh, you've lost your first two games." Well, look, we've won two in a row. Right, things are looking good. We've uh, kept two clean sheets. We're beginning to score goals. Um, we're, we're playing good. There's no need to panic, guys. Things are looking all right. Uh, we do have some injuries, but they'll be back for the Hibs game. Now, hopefully, at Hibs, that we play at time at Tynecastle, we win that. It makes it three in a row, and then we have a run of very winnable games: County away, and then Livingston and Mullerwell at home. Ideally, uh, what I'm looking for is 12 points at these next four games before we take on Rangers. Then we go to Ibrox. I will be looking for some revenge after the humility that was in the cup. Didn't even allow us a shot. So uh, I'll, be, I'll be looking for revenge against that one. But yeah, next time out against Hibs, I'm hoping we can win that and then set our sights on the next three home games or the next three league games even against County, Livingston and Mullerwell where I think we can try and get maximum points. Who knows, Mullerwell are playing alright. Could be tougher than uh, I expect. But at home, I think you would, you would, you would fancy our chances of beating anybody at home. Especially Mullerwell. So hey, there you go guys. That's going to do it. Till next time. Make sure you leave a like, comment, all that good stuff. Say a prayer for the players. Hopefully no one else gets injured in this international spell. I don't want to come back and we've got about 10 leg breakers because the players were playing, I don't know, more minutes than they should have for their clubs. As long as Barry Mackay doesn't get injured, we're alright. Because he's the one that's scoring the goals. He's the one that's creating the chances. So if he stays fit, we should be good guys. Anyway, that's it. Till next time. Thanks for watching and peace.